And now, without further ado, I have the distinguished honor and privilege of presenting to you the Queen of Color, the Mother of Artists, globally acclaimed, award-winning Master Acrylic Artist, and the star of our show, Ginger Cook, as she once again mesmerizes her audience with the daring do's and don'ts of painting with acrylic. Ginger, are you out there? Oh, look at me. I'm peeking around the corner. Hey, I am. I'm just... Uh, no, I'm peeking around the corner. I, I, I have a little baby thumbnail of me over in the corner there, and I can point at you. Okay. The Star Wars show is right there. Okay. Hi, John. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's a welcome to our uh, Ginger Cook Live YouTube extravaganza. That sounds good, doesn't it? It does. I, I don't know if we're going to... I, I think an extravaganza is a great thing. I mean, I don't know what we're going to be extravagant about, but you know what? Whenever you're talking about Vincent Van Gogh, it feels extravagant. Cause oh, it does. What an artist this guy was. And the two most famous paintings of his, I mean, he did hundreds. I mean, like six, seven hundred different paintings, you guys. But the ones that most people are familiar with are, of course, Van Gogh, A Starry Night, which is the painting I have behind me. This one is a 30 by 36, and it's all done with this textured gel. You know, it's so cool. And we actually have a video on YouTube on how to do this one. And, I mean, I did it, you know, not all that large, but this one I did huge. And it's done, it's really fun, and, and then... To get the kind of texture you need, um, I tell you how to get the right kind of gels and everything, which of course you're going to want, you know, to get that texture. And uh, that's a good video to watch too. You might want to follow the link after this one. But today we're going to be doing his other most famous one, which is his cafe, Cafe Bistro. Now, what's interesting to me is that I saw a thing on the Viking River cruises, uh, at what I think it was an ad they were running on um, Channel Eight, you know, for Masterpiece. And apparently you can go visit this very cafe. It's still there. Really? How neat is that? I would love to do that. I'm thinking you know, road trip. I think we ought to have a road trip. All of us ought to go and descend on the cafe and have a cup of coffee or tea or something. Maybe and a glass set up of our ice easel, tea. Set up our easels and paints and, and paint so, it. Wouldn't that be fun, you guys? I mean, I think that would be just great. But in the meantime, let's just paint it. And Now, the reason this has come up is uh, this was when I taught painting parties for a number of years, gosh, like over seven, all right, and I designed most of the paintings. This was the one that people wanted to do the most, but you've got to understand the parameter of a painting party, there's no hair dryer, we're using the cheapest possible paints in the world, and we're t talking it to people, and the first thing they say when they walk in there is, I can't do anything, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this, mm -uh. that's what they say, or I'm so drunk I don't think I can pick up a pencil, right? And still, our job was to make sure that they could get the picture, okay? So... And they did. I made a very simple version of this, kind of a painting party version. I'm going to hold it up and show it to you. You can watch the camera so I don't knock anything. And this was what we were able to teach people. And they'd go home with this very happy. Now, I'm going to do, we're, today we're going to do a little bit more sophisticated version of his painting than this one. Though there's nothing wrong with this. This is fine. But I think because we're going to be using professional acrylics, we're going to have some hair dryers and some rulers and stuff, that we might have a better shot of getting closer to his original. Okay? So that's what we're going to be do doing today. And uh, incidentally, that one was 16 by 20. And we're going to do the same. I think I showed you this trick a few videos ago on um, on how to you know draw something in. And no, friends, there is no traceable. I want you to follow along. If you, you can... You know, the painting party version, I guess we'll give you a traceable for that. But if you want to get down to the real deal, you got to be better than this, you guys. All right? I might put the traceable up for the painting party version just to kind of be mean. Because here's the thing. I think you can follow along and get this. And if you're always relying on traceables, you're never going to get very far in the artwork. It's okay for a while, and sometimes it can be convenient. But if that's your crutch, let's lose it. Okay? Because it doesn't need that you don't... Honestly, nobody gives you a traceable when you have to sign your name. You just do it. It's second nature to you, isn't it? And when you're driving the car, you don't think, let's see, I'm going to turn on the ignition, then I'm going to put it in reverse. Eventually, you get it. And this is a skill that you guys are going to learn. So that's my speech. I want, to, I want us to break away from some of this. I'm going to show you how to do it. So, and anybody can do it, okay? Mm, most anybody, anyway. So <laughs> let's start with... Um, 
So I'm going to come down, John, if you would be so kind. And somehow, I want to, somehow I knew that. I started to shrink you down. Yeah, shrink me down. And here's the, here's the small version of the painting party. So if you want to do something like that, we'll have that traceable on our website. You're more than welcome to do it. Uh, but this is the one. And then, of course, this is a pick copy of his original. All right. So what I'm going to do, I've got an 11 by 14 canvas. And um, looks like it's pre-painted. And it's pre-painted cad yellow medium. And dry. Nothing, just, that's, that's it. just straight cad just yellow. Tra straight cad yellow. Because there's so much yellow in this, all right? I want that as an underpainting. Does that make sense? So much yellow in this picture. So now I'm going to just fold this in half like this. Watching this do this. Then I'm going to fold it in half again. Like that. Then let's do it a couple more times. Let's do it one more time this way. And we're going to do it one more time. Wow. This way, okay, guys, with me. Now, when we unfold this, in fact, I think if you'd be so kind as to print me out a second one of this, because it's all going to be messed up after I put oh, the lines certainly. on it. Yeah, I'm I know you're not doing anything yeah, over there, not, John. I'm not doing all right, over so here. now you see what I've got. Now I'm going to take a ruler and and my white chalk, which I think I want to sharpen the point on. Just can't, hang on a second, you guys. Do this over the wastebasket. Incidentally, I want to again thank that nice, nice gal in England who sent me the pencil sharpener. These are Conti white charcoal pencils, and I love these. You can draw on uh, your canvas with them. They erase really nicely. My problem was I could never figure out how to sharpen them. I went through all my eyebrow pencil sharpeners and everything I had in my cosmetic drawer, and I couldn't find anything at the art store. The, this, this, the sharpener came from England, but th that they're nice. All right, so now I'm going to just come along here like that. See this with my white like that, and then I want to um, find my uh, middle section here. I'm going to fold that down. I want to get my crease going again here so I can make sure I can see it. All right, I'm going to just do that. Now, it, it's important that, um, you know, we take a minute and we really look how to do this. And why I'm, why I'm drawing this in, John, do we have any questions from our audience? Well, as a matter of fact, I do have one that's popped up here. Okay, because this is just, you know, kind of like watching grass grow. Yeah, uh, and we get this one quite often. What's the difference between mixing white, zinc white, titanium white? All these whites are driving me nuts. Well, and that's coming uh, from uh, Becky. titanium white is the white you're going to use. That's your opaque white, the one that means if English is your second language, uh, that means that you don't. Um, did I get that? Pretty much. Uh, English is your second language. That means you're not. Um, you can't see through it. It's like a door. You know, it's it's it's, it's uh, when you paint it now. That's true only in the sense that that's your professional titanium white. Sometimes your, I want this one, hon, not that one. I want you to print me out this one, not that one. Sorry. Focus. <laughs> Focus. All right. Well, we kind of ad lib as we go here, right? So anyway, so that when you, so 99% of the time or 95% of the time, you're going to be using titanium white. And if you have, even if you're using inexpensive, even if that's the case, you're using inexpensive paints, okay, um, like not, you're not using the professional acrylics, go buy the professional titanium white and get a giant tube of it. You could do it golden, a Liquitex heavy body, Matisse, it doesn't really matter. Um, or maybe you live in a country where you have to, <laughs> There's a different brand name for that, but you want that really good one because that really covers. Now, <coughs> mixing white, a couple of brands make that, and it, it's a transparent white, and it is a combination of some some relative combination of, and I don't know the percentages, of zinc white, which is an extremely transparent white, and um, there, see, isn't that cool? Look at that. See all my little squares? Now, what we're going to do is do the same thing here. We, um, we're going to do it just like we did the other day. So this is, um, this is 11. So 5 and a half is going to be in the center like that. And I'm going to use a green... A sharp a, a green sharpen um, yeah, that. Is that only two choices? Because that's pretty light, too. Is that I don't think I have... Well, if I get it much darker, it'll be hard to paint over. Okay. So I pretty much have got to use it. The maybe sharpen that a little bit then so we can... Yeah, just sharpen that a little bit. All right, so you want this one instead. Yeah, thank you. I want that one instead. Thank you very much. So, um, again, we want um, uh, five and a half here, which is right here because it's 11, so half of that, okay? 
And what we discovered the other day when we were fooling around doing this, do you guys remember that? We discovered that um, um, uh, if you can't, if you're not sure what half of something is, uh, Alexa knows. <laughs> and she right. gives it to you in such a scientific fashion. Yeah, so too. then we're going to do, so half of um, a five and a half was, what did we say that was, John? Two I said it was two and three quarters. Two and three quarters. And, and Alexa yeah. agreed with me. Okay, that was two and three quarters, all right, so the, on this canvas. But this could be on any size canvas. You could do this bigger, too. You could do this on a 30 by 40. Make do sure the that's same square. thing. You know, that's, that's the trick with this stuff is that once you get it down, how to do it, okay, you can do this on any. So to answer your question, what do you use zinc and mixing white and all that stuff for? What you use it for is that, for instance, um, clouds sometimes in the distance are, are very soft and see-through, and, and someone says, well, can't I just put water with my titanium white or gel or something and get that effect? You really can't. Um, uh, let's see, that's got to be this one right here, right? You're going to go, it's going to be the eight and a quarter. Eight, 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 eight and a quarter? Yeah. Here, thank you. On this side, it's eight and a quarter because I'm going all the way across. I knew that's what confused me. Well, <laughs> the, you know, numbers, are, you don't have to be great at numbers, right? To just, um, you know, there's so many cheats anymore. You don't have to be great at numbers to do this kind of thing. But this is, this is any painting. So if you get in the habit of doing this instead of your traceables, you're going to discover how much better your drawing skills are going to improve. All right, so half of um, 14 is 7. So uh, I think that's what we said this was, 12, 13, 14. So here's 7. Does that, does that, that doesn't look like half. That can't be right, is it? But it is. Seven? <laughs> I guess it is. It's huh? amazing. So, so awesome, man. Just, this doesn't look right to me. Why does this not look right? Why does that... Is that really a 14-inch canvas? It is. It's 11 by 14, I think. 12. Yeah, I think so. But boy, seven sure looks wrong. Well, you know, when I went to school, seven was half of 14. I know. And me too. So, so that's seven... So if I add another, if I go down here to 7 from here, let me just, sorry, I'm double checking here. And there's uh, 7, okay, all right, fine. Just, when I was looking at that, it just looked wrong. What I'm using is a T-square, so you just have to have one mark, line this up on the side of the canvas, and you're not, you know, marking everything all over the place. All right, so half of 7 is uh, three and a half. Ooh. See, I mean, you just think I don't know anything, but you know. <laughs> Well, I'm going by what your shirt says. You know, five out of four people just have trouble with fractions. Well, it's just not that we have trouble with it. We're dyslexic. And one of the hardest things in school for me was, you know, I think I'd written the answer right, and I'd written it down a totally different number. But in my mind, I wrote down seven, and maybe I wrote down five or something. And I, my, my eyes couldn't see it. And what particularly happened, not so much with single numbers, but um, long numbers, you know, something with, say, ten numbers in it, I might reverse the middle two. And the thing is that when you're just, there's like 90 different kinds of dyslexia. But if you have that tragic kind, okay. I'd flip the T-square around and do it against the board Would you, would you do so that? That's what I would do. But So that's still three and a half here, right? Yeah, it's still three and a half. Coming or going? <laughs> going, right? So anyway, so I was made to feel in school because nobody, when I went to school, nobody had ever heard of dyslexia. They just knew that you were screwing up somehow. <laughs> And, um, and so I was made to feel like I couldn't do math. Actually, I was pretty good at math. I just wasn't very good at writing it down. <laughs> but And then um, same thing with spelling. I was a very good reader. Now, some dyslexic people can't read. I was an extremely good reader, still am. But when I would go to write the, you know, a big, long word, I'd, I'd reverse a couple of the letters. So that being said, all right, so here's, we're going to number the squares. We're going to do that. We're going to take this and go one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. See, I, see, I have no trouble with this. All aren't you impressed? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. All right. So let's do that with these two. And the reason you want to do that with these two, also, well, maybe you won't need to. But I'm going to just do. This is one. This is square five. This is 9, and this is 13. Maybe that'll help me. Just kind of keep track of where you are. If you need to number them all, do that. All right, so what do we know about square 1? Not too much. We're going to leave that alone for now. But square 2, we're going to come up about halfway and put a dot and come in about um, 
an inch and put a dot and go down about an inch like that and then draw a line just at an angle like that and straight down on the line. How convenient was that, okay? And this goes down to about an inch below into square number six. Comes down here and here's our line. Maybe now's the time to use a different color, wouldn't it be? Maybe I can do this so that you can see it, right? Like this, the chalk, like this, and I'm going to come down like this. All right, so see what I did? Yeah, now, that shows, up better. that shows up better, okay? Now, in, um, in square two, I, if you uh, can just follow with me, right here on the corner, I'm going to cut it off right here, and I want to come down to this line and just draw this line here, just curve a line here, and I want to come out. This is square seven. I'm going to come out just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch, and then come right back down, just right at an angle down here like this, to this is the bottom of square seven. Now, how cool is that? Now, let me just draw that in for you. Let me change chalks because um, here, I'm going to just come here like this and draw this down like that. See what I did? And come here like that. Okay, you with me? Okay, so, so I can part see of it. The, um this is the awning. That's this yeah. awning thing, right? So we're just, you know, whenever you're starting anything, start with what you know. You see what I mean? Say, so what do I know for sure? Well, I know for sure, right, that that's, that's this square, okay? And then what do I know for sure? I know for sure that this line comes straight down here like this, like that. This line comes straight down here. Oh, that's good, right? I know that for sure. And then what do I know for sure? Back in square number one, this little pink line comes up, just comes up here and does this. Can you see that? Comes up here and does this. Then ha angles up like that. Then back down. Not all the way. And then it's going to cross over. Let's, we're just going to come down here about a third of the way down here. This kind of crosses down here like this. And then, alright, and it's still going down at an angle. So we're back down into square number six. We're going to come over about an, an inch and go up an inch, put a dot, and then curve this like this, and then connect it like that to the corner. Okay, so that's that awning. Aren't you impressed? And then this is a straight line up and down here, okay? That's that back corner? That's this corner of it, right? Now, this is part of this building. So then, so then what do we know about this? Well, we know that this line... We're going to start back down here in square number nine now and do something kind of fun. We're going to come up on square number nine. I might even just use my um, ruler and come under here about a quarter of an inch to turn that. Again. What you want to do is kind of hook that on the side here like that. I'm going to about a quarter of an inch. And on square number nine, I'm just going to say that this is the inside edge here. And I want to come out another quarter of an inch like that, do another one like that. So I've got these two, right? This is where I wrote the word nine here, all right? And then I want to come, all right, I, I, we're going to still do more of that, but that's this. Now, if you'll notice on the bottom of nine, where this line is here, where nine is, just below that, just below this, right here, is a, is a line that's going to go to here. It's going to cross over and do this. It's going to connect Let's see, so this, this one comes straight down our awning and then comes down about another inch like this. Comes straight down into square number 10 and then does this, okay? Just below that, there it does this, a little line. See how we did that? So, uh, you know, you just sort of measure, that came down there like that. And then this one, let's go back down to square number 13. Let's come up about an inch and a quarter and put a straight line and start connecting these like this and then do a little angle and connect this one. See how this one's going to angle up like to this corner? Put this one in. Alright, so that's this post here. And then here's our line crossing this way. See here's the, the, of our square. We want to come down about to halfway on this post and we want to draw a line through here and through the next one that would be uh, number t uh, 14, and about halfway of 15, like that, halfway of 15, okay? So we've got this line straight across the bottom like this, okay? 
All right, that's good. See, that's really simple when you think about how we're going to do this. All right. Now, what about our awning? We're going to come in here to square number. Um, just draw, just draw a straight line across here like that. That'll help you, right? And then we're going to come straight up and down here, and then connect this point to this point. Wow. See, there's that's your patio. That All right. seems simple. I mean, it is simple because it's boxes. I mean, this is boxes, you guys. All you, you do is connecting the dots. We're connecting the dots. You're making your own dot to Remember dot. Remember doing connecting the dots? Yeah, you're connecting the dots. Now, let's take this one up. I did that. Um, here's, our, here's square number uh, five, right? In the top of um, this one, and this will be easy, square number five, the very top right here, and if we went over about an, about an inch and came down a, 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 about that far, we can make a little line like that. Okay, you ready? Then straight down like this. Guess you can curve it around if you want to. And then angle this down. This is about another inch, right? Like that, like that. Angle this down. And then you're going to put, you're going to connect this line. You have to be kind of careful if you're using chalk now because it's all going to get smeary. But here, you're going to connect these two lines like this. You ready? All right, so these two lines like this. Now we've got the now we've got this guy, okay? We've got this guy. And that's this sort of corner piece. Okay, so I mean these are the kinds of things you know. Now what do we know about up here? Well, we'll do those later because we really can put those in. Honestly, we can put those in later. We've got the important stuff. Now, this is still square number 5, okay? Or rectangle number 5. I want to come up going to come in just a touch, come up about a third of the way, and I'm going to do this sharp angle and draw a line down like this. I'm just going to connect down to the bottom of here. So we're just going to do this, just straight down like this, and this is the first window, like that. And see how this line is sharply angled down, and then there's another sharp one right here that's um, just on the inside of this one. Here's another one of these little windows, and it's going to come down like this, like that. There's this one. I'm just going to kind of sketch that in. So that's a little bit shorter. It's coming here. And then what we've got here is a little tiny window here like that. Just a little window here it comes. Um, actually, it's below. I'm going to have to lower this a little bit. We're going to lower this. We're going to take this line down a little bit lower and then do this. Okay, here's our window right here. All right, good. We're all good. This is why we use chalk, so you can just erase something if you don't like it. So we're going to say we don't want that. This is All right, so here we go. We're going to cut, because this has to be under this line here, under the, in, in 10. It's slightly below the line in 10. Well, when you do it, you'll probably maybe see it, something I'm not seeing, but that's okay. So that's this. Here's our patio. Okay, so this main building, friends, is in. Like that. Now, let's get the other one. Let's come across here, about halfway down, about a third of the way, just straight from, from this one, about a quarter of an inch, and come, come across, and then up at an angle, and in, and at an angle like this. We don't have to get it too perfect at this point. We're just saying there's some little buildings in here. Now we're going to go up at an angle and cross and at an angle, cross and up. We just went down, do like stair steps, like this, cross at an angle. And then this line here, this one here, this would be, uh, this is 8, right? We're going to come straight down from 8 and into 8 and just come a, knock all the way down to the bottom here. And just come across like that. All right, so that's going to be building eight. Just come down here like that. You know, there's very little detail. This is all just black, and then there's there's a little churchy thing here that we'll put later. Now, about here's twelve. It's not quite half, but I'm going to go half because my picture is a little longer. So I'm going to go half, and I'm going to come this way and come up and just make a box like this, a little box right here. Make a box. All right, and then I want to come about, what, about an inch and a quarter here and do a line like this. 
okay? And then right here where our patio ends, this just comes across straight across like this. So all this is going to be black, all right? I'll put a big B here. That's going to be black. That's kind of gray, and there's our stuff. So if that's all our patio, now basically what we've done is draw this in. All right, are you kind of impressed? We've drawn that in. I mean, that's our picture. It's amazing. And, and you that, did that is without a traceable. Without a traceable, that's that's how easy this is. And then you know you can refer to one of these and have another one printed out for your detail. But this is basically, and I don't care how big you want it to make it. You just and and here's the thing. Suppose you were there was some detail and you weren't sure, right? So what you can do, and I'll show you that. One of the things, if you're having trouble, and you've, you divide it into these squares, like four across, but what if there's something you want more again? What if you drew a line across like this and did an X? All right, so if you drew an X in here like this, would that help you see where something had to be? So if you're not sure, you can either make another set of squares or just draw an X or even something in a diagonal. And that will, and then just fill in whatever's in these little sections. And this so is you just the keep. Grid you, this is called the grid system. So we're like if you were doing a very complicated piece, not the whole thing is complicated. So sometimes you'll make smaller squares where there's details so that you can focus in on that. But if it's a general thing like this, you don't need much. So now that we've put this away, okay, I want you to see. You have to see how cool this is that we've done that. So now we're going to put out our paint. John, while I'm putting out paint, which is our normal stuff, a black, except we're going to add black because he painted with black, so to keep this authentic, we're going to do black and we're going to do a Posca black marker, okay, to, for our detail, all right? Now, I'm going to put out some white paint, and, um, and incidentally, you may have seen we did sort of a painting party version of this on a bag on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, we have a, we have a really kind of, I think it's a two-part uh, painting of how to, you know, pa painted this on just a pretty, you know, kind of a canvas bag. A lot, a lot, a lot of people saw it, so we're doing this again on canvas to really show you how to do this. So we're doing white and cad yellow medium. And that's and just a normal titanium white. The titanium white. We're not doing mixing white or anything like that. We're just doing that. We've got it on a yellow background. We're going to do both blues, ultramarine blue and thalo. And um, yellow, cad yellow medium, purple, burnt umber, cad red medium, and maybe some magenta... I don't know. Don't put it out yet. I'll let you know. Okay? So here's some phthalo blue. Now, any other questions while I'm putting the, can't, can't the paint out, John? Well, yeah. We've had a member ask, if, if I'm a member of your online art academy, Yeah, okay. can I send in artwork from other sources instead of just your artwork, you know, on your, what you're offering, if I'm painting something else from somebody else. Well, you can. It, you know, if, if you're a member, you can do that once a month. You can give me something from something else. Maybe it's a, you're painting from a photograph you found, or maybe you're, um, there was some other art that you saw somewhere, and you want to paint that. Here's the thing. Cinnamon and I have kind of a deal. I try very hard not to get involved with any of her artwork as far as any of her lessons and critique them or anything. We don't do that. Mother and daughter, we still have to see each other at Thanksgiving and family parties. Can't do that stuff. But pretty much anybody else is fair game. But here's the thing. We've discovered that there are some people that may find that they, you know, they don't want to take, you know, they don't want to enroll in a monthly um, uh a bunch of videos that maybe there's paintings, even though we have over 300, it's not their thing. Maybe they're just doing abstracts or whatever your thing is. And that's okay. John and I decided we've got a new program. This is really important. We have a new program that, uh, that we've, uh, uh, we're initiating and where it's just art, art help. It's art coaching without any access to the videos on our website. And, and what you'll get if you're one of those, we're going to limit this. To every month we're going to have, uh, what do we say, 20, 20 available, 20 spots available every month because I can only do so much. And I think a lot of people are going to want to do this. And it's pure art coaching. I don't care what, what you're doing, if you're working on a portrait, if you're working on an art show, just want some outside advice. It's, um, John, John how, how are we pricing that? Because I think, that, I, I think this is key. Well, what we're going to be doing is for $16.95, you're going to have basically three tickets or three certificates or three requests that you can make. Now, you can make it on one painting, going back and forth with Ginger, three times on one painting. 
or three different paintings, or two paintings once, one twice, and one once. If however you, you want to use them. In however you want to use them. You got three certificates to use up. And so is it, is it gonna, and, and, and John, it's pretty easy to send us paintings, isn't it, under the ticket system, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to figure that out because you're not going to be a full-fledged member, so we'll create something for you folks using our ticket system, um, which others have found to be very helpful where they can keep track of what they've sent in and see their progress, and Ginger will have that as a reference as well. Uh, it keeps it online, so that way it's always available to you. So uh, we're still finalizing this. This is something that... Hopefully, by the time this video is aired, that you'll have a we'll have it noticed and put it out there, so you'll be able to access it. We're kind of excited about offering this because we've had some people say, you know, I'm pretty good, but there's you know I have a big art competition coming up, or I've got a, a show coming up, and I want to make sure I just get you know put my best foot forward. But they don't want to join us for a month. They don't, you know. Or maybe you just you don't want to join us for a month, and when you join us for a week, you don't get art coaching. It's it's nine ninety five, and you get access to all our lessons, but you don't get art coaching. So uh, twenty six ninety five gets you access to all our lessons, and which is less than the cost of two tubes of paint, by the way, and personal art coaching, kind of unlimited. All right, unlimited art coaching, but uh, you know, on all the, on all our YouTube lessons and on our on our. Um, in our videos. So that's really a great deal. But for some people, they're just, you know, they're really, you know, they don't want to do any more videos. They just want to do their thing and get help with it. And I find, you know, that's handy. And I'm happy to help you. It's a professional artist's eyes. And I will make, and I just ask that people send me a reference. But even for that price, if you, even if you don't have a reference, I will still help you. All right. Um, and and get, get the you know get my very best advice on what I think you can do to um, get the most out of your your painting for whatever reason and just uh, you know so anyway if you we think that's cool we'd love your feedback if you're interested in that um, again we're only going to take 20 uh, people in any given month so if you're interested in that go ahead and eat, contact us at gingercooklive.gallery and let yeah. us know you'd yeah. be like to be one of the first ones in that and. Uh, We'll let you know when slots become available for you. If it fills up fast, we'll let you know when we'll have it. But hopefully this will be something that every, you know, this is sort of, you know, something that we knew people wanted and wanted to be sure to help you with that, you know? All right. So this so, is something new, and this could be rescinded at any time. We may cancel, you know, if it becomes too much. If we get overwhelmed, much, we may cancel it. We think it sounds good, though, doesn't it? The All right, so now the other color I'm putting out is Payne's Gray, which is kind of like black. Uh, but if you have black, use that. I didn't happen to have any black. Payne's Gray, Daniel left me this. It's um, Payne's Gray is ultramarine blue and black. Did you know that? Sort of, sort of a, you know, it's kind of a mat, matted black color. So, all right. So the first thing we're going to do is, I, I, for me, for acrylics, I like to, I like to start with the background. So I'm going to start with um, ultramarine blue. And I'm using a little uh, ruby satin silver uh, angle brush, a little 3 8 inch angle brush, a little bit of white. Now you see that's kind of bright, isn't it? So what we're going to do is take a little tiny bit of that black and add to that because that's what he would have done. And we're going to kind of gray that sky a bit. A little tiny bit of black into that sky. Now this is where the brush strokes are going to be kind of important. All right, we're going to come straight down with our brush like that. And just now I do have a thumbnail of the original up there for their reference. Okay, so we're giving you the thumbnail of the original. Okay. Now you can tell on the on the printout that how his brush strokes were. They're straight up and down on that. Yeah. He was yeah, all the about color is not the color is not mixed that well. You see some of the black in there too. See, maybe not that much, but you see a little bit of the black kind of intermixed with that. So it's just um, sometimes people will sit there. I've watched this, you guys. They'll sit there and they're mixing a color. They go around and around, almost so mesmerized and mixing the color that nothing else happens. You, you know, um, generally speaking, I'm, and, unless I'm talking about a giant area, it's kind of nice if you don't overmix. You talk about overworking, but you can absolutely overmix a color. Okay. Now you see, I've kind of lost uh, that color. Now I'm going to put a little bit more ultramarine blue, a little bit more white, a little bit more kind of gray it. And as I get down toward the bottom, I'm going to add more white. It's lighter. Can you see that in this picture? You can see down here it's lighter. You guys see that? It's lighter. And that's something that happens with skies. So it's lighter as you come down in toward his, um, his buildings like that. Now you are watching this because John and I 
are out of town. This is why you're seeing it like this. You're going, well, how could you be out of town and see this? Well, it's a secret, we'll tell you. <laughs> but we're out of town. It's, it's, but, it's movie magic. But we magic. realized that people like our show, just the way we do our show. And we thought we would try to just do the John and Ginger painting show for you guys because you kind of like that. And um, not just, a, you know, if you want the straight lessons, you know, the straight um, lessons, we certainly have those. For instance, um, on our website, we've got a lot of Vincent Van Gogh on our website and also on YouTube. I have a whole playlist just of his stuff. This is one of my favorites he did. I think this we released this last Father's Day with the pipe and the hat and the teapot. We've got that. We love that. Um, I think on YouTube we released this one. Um, which they kind of go together, don't you? These old wooden shoes, you know, and um, and these bottles it's and stuff. That was so pretty. And But he was about color. Here's a portrait that's going to be one of the new videos on our website, uh, uh, JinnyCookLive.gallery on the Academy. Look at that. Don't you love his colors, right? He was an interesting self-portrait. He was an interesting-looking dude, wasn't he? So, uh, all right, so I've got this. Now, you'll notice that he has these little stars in here. Have you seen that? A little in the sky. Can you see that? So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try something. I'm going to take, this is one of Cinnamon's little brushes, and I'm going to see if it'll erase. It's one of these, what is, this was uh, one of the art sherpas, my daughter Cinnamon's brushes. This is called a silver scrubby dome, okay? So I'm going to just sit here like this and worry a hole. See that? Do you see how I did that? You worried a hole. I worried a hole. Huh. You know, when I was a kid, shall I tell you a bratty thing I did? I just, well, one of the bratty things I did, I was just kind of a brat, actually, but... Um, anyway, I, I would sit out in the playground and find a rock, and I would twirl around and around all playground for weeks till I, or till I wore a hole in my shoe, and then I'd tell my mother, I don't know what happened. I have a hole in my shoe. I, I don't know what that was about, right? But, and uh, you did what, because you wanted new shoes, or? I don't know, because I could do it. I just can't explain it. I could do what it. What a brat. <laughs> it was, it was, I know. Of course, they didn't always get me new shoes. Sometimes they went to the cobbler and had the soles replaced, and I'd do it again. Nobody ever caught on. All right, see how I'm making these little stars? Aren't you guys? Because we, because why? Because we, there's a little bit of water. See, we just, um, there's a few big ones. This is her little round brush. Now let's try some, let's go for some smaller ones now, right? That's it. This is a cute one to do this. What else could we do this with? Huh. Let's see, can we do it with, here's a little tiny ruby satin silver brush. I'm going to wet it. You want a little water on this. Now I'm going to sit here and I'm going to just worry that. See, that's going to work like that. I'm basically erasing. Um, I'm erasing. And do please do this random. Do, do, random stars. I see people do these in rolls. That's you sock folders. <laughs> you just do these in rows, We can't right? help it. Yeah, but please make it random. Random means uh, helter-skelter, willy-nilly. Random, Willy odd Nilly. places. Do you know Willie and Nilly? Yeah, Willie and Nilly. Willie and Nilly. One, that one seems very bright. Which this one? Yeah. Yeah, we'll tone that down. But it is, isn't it? But we can start. We need that there. I like the there. other ones. It's kind of a cool effect. It's kind of a cool effect. I mean, you know what I mean? It's a cool effect. Here, here we tone that down a little bit. Just, you know, a little bit. See? We'll just take some of that paint, right, like that. Kind of tone that down. Ooh, doo -doo -doo. Like that. Like that. There, see? Got to put the stars in. All right, and different sizes, see? See, you'll notice that I'm a little, and then wipe. It's like mopping a floor. Really, not any different, only you're doing it with a little tiny brush. I don't think a pointy brush, I think it would be too soft, unless you had a very stiff pointy brush. And if it's not lifting, get more water and work it in the same place, just like I used to do with my shoe. <laughs> I had practice. I probably was a prerequisite for learning how to do this. Don't you think so? I think so. I this think is that's why you can do this so well. Yeah, because I mean, I have this down now because I learned when I was in the, I was in the fourth grade when I did that. Maybe the second. I don't remember. It was a boarding school. Probably was disgruntled. Who sends a kid to boarding school at that age? Apparently they did. All right. So now you could put a little white with this now. And I'll put a little bit of this blue color. And if you wanted to, you could just... Well, you want to really get this thin. You could tap some light around it like that. I mean, you could, you know, kind of, well, let's let, let that dry, and then we'll dry brush a little light halo around some of these. How's that? We'll let that dry. So, all right, but there's our sky, and I knew you were all suitably impressed with that, right? So then what's next? Okay, so I'm looking at this. Let me move my, 
ruler and I'm going to just look at my picture and say, what's next? Well, what could I do now? Well, I certainly could do this side. I've got, um, I'm working my way down. So I'm going to just take some, um, uh, some black, which is our, uh, you know, Payne's gray. I come right up next to this like that using my small brush. I'm going to go ahead and say that um, all of this is going to be dark. Okay, so now I'm going to just do a little bit more particular about the outline of my skyline than I did when I drew it in, and that's what your, uh, you know, your cheat sheet's for. Maybe you want to, you know, put sneak up a few little buildings like that in here, just to kind of, or maybe they're chimneys, who knows. Um, I'm going to put that in here, and we're going to say that this is um, dark, but right, right in here, right, right in here, I'm going to leave a space for some windows, two windows. And please notice the angle is very sharp. But it's just there, up here. They're not up here, but for sure up here. There's just these two windows in here, and then the rest is kind of hidden by a tree. And then there's another couple down here like this. Hmm. I mean, I can put them back with yellow, but, um, you know, why, right? Well, well wouldn't that be a little tough to put yellow back over white? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little harder over black. So we're just doing it like that. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna, I need a little bigger brush. That's almost it's too small. Let's move on up to a slightly larger angle brush. That's too big. I feel like Goldilocks now with the brushes. Uh, here's the next one. Let's see this one. Well, that's really small. Oh, this one. That's the one. When, when we did the sky with, we'll come back up, get a little bit of this. And we're going to say all of this is... Uh, in here like that. I'm going to um, paint this down here and then under here straight down. This is our building like that. And then as it turns the corner here, right here, as it turns the corner, we've got um, some windows and doors. Kind of lost the door there, but we can put it back. There you go. I just generally want that. Now I'm going to add some white to this and a little blue. So kind of a white, blue, gray color, right? And I'm going to come up here and say that this is our a um, little more dark. This is our light gray side of the building, and it's kind of blue. See that? And we're going to kind of blend that in here like that. And he just uh, get this all kind of little tiny bit of water on the brush. We're going to say that right above here, a little bit more gray with this. We're going to say that this was our, uh, this part of the building right here like this. It's coming this way. And uh, kind, of, kind of fooling around up here. And then he took this part here and just brought some dark down. Just brought some dark down over this. Okay. All right, so this is so, uh, and then he's got a little bit of this gray color in here. I can kind of see it. So, just that I know it looks really black, but this is sort of what we're doing right here. And then underneath here, it's dark, and right here, it's dark. So, you know, pretty dark anyway. Right in here, we've got a, we've got some sort of a window, and this is straight up and down. Make sure that these these lines here are parallel to the sides and back of your canvas. But now look how easily that painted in and we'll fool with that in a bit but we've got that kind of down okay basically then, you're roughing it in yeah we're just roughing it in I guess that's a great example of what we're talking about we're roughing it in like that with these windows and stuff and again don't get caught up in the details no one else probably is going to look at your picture exactly like his just get generally that you can kind of generally get the feeling of this I think you're going to feel pretty good about it the same thing here. Now, if you've been into black, here's the trick. Wash your brush really well. Touch the bottom of a container. Wipe it off on a towel. Make sure you don't have any more black. Now, let's just, uh, well, actually, we kind of still need it, don't we? So let's take some white and a little bit of gray. Let's make a light gray color. And um, let's put a little purple in it, just a tiny bit of Dosnine purple, okay, and a tiny bit of yellow, okay? Get Dosnine purple and yellow. And, and a little bit of Payne's Gray. Now, that's a beautiful color. All right, now we're going to come on up here like that over our yellow. And we're going to paint in 
Remember, we've got our awning here. And this is sort of this interesting gray. Did you know that there were that many different kinds of gray? Interesting gray. What we're going to put, put in right here like that. We've got a little bit more white to this. And as I come over here, I want to lighten it up some. A little more white. Let's say here's my light gray color coming down. Okay, now right about here we stop, just below where that that yellow awning starts. We're going to stop there and kind of leave a little yellow edge here. We'll leave a little bit of a yellow edge. Now that's an interesting thing because you're going to ask yourself well, where else could this uh, color go? And uh, right now we're just sort of blocking that in. But um, what happens in here, what we've got here is some interesting, um, the brush strokes are all going, let me just show you for a minute, the brush strokes are all going this way, this way on the awning and straight up and down here. So before we get too clever, let's take a little bit of yellow and a, a tiny bit of cad red medium, all right, and let's come over here like this, right here, and um, let's make this brighter, let's add a little bit of white to that. A little bit of yellow. You don't want any black in this at all. You don't want this dull. You want this a bright orange. Okay, and we're going to say that this is our windows right here and here, like this. Okay, and here's it goes down to the, it goes clear down to the, um, let's make this a little bit more yellow in that. That's it, just isn't even bright enough for me yet. Okay. All right, there's our um, there's our two yellow, you know, two, two orange windows, right? And then as long as I'm in the orange, I'm going to add some more cad red medium, some more ye cad yellow medium, make a bright orange. All right, a very bright orange, and I'm going to say here's my patio. Okay, see that? Remember we said it's going to be right here. As long as I'm painting something in, yeah, I'm going to say that there's my patio. Paint that in. So while I'm painting in patio, we have any more questions? Uh, yeah. Speaking of the uh, trip, we had one come in. When you and John are traveling, do you ever stop and see people? You know, we've done that. We've stopped and seen people. Seen people. We had, really had a nice time somewhere when we went to Florida uh, last year, and um, that was and in uh, Pan Panama got, City. It, yeah, Panama City, Florida. We stopped and met a few of our viewers who were there, which we very much had fun seeing you guys. All right, I'm going to put a little orange in here, too. See that? In this window, right like that. And it's got to be more yellow, so let's take a little bit more yellow with that. It's a brighter orange right here. Okay, and as long as I'm in that color, I want to just... It's still yellow, but I'm going to come right down here on these windows here. And I've got an orange door, and remember we had some black here, but I've got right next to this, I've got an orange door. And it's far enough away where it's painting. Do you see that? It's painting over that. The, the black should be dry before you do this, all right? Then let's come on up here with this this color, a little bit light. We're going to say, we're just going to suggest some windows here, uh, like that maybe, and like that. And then whatever we don't want for windows, we'll um, kind of paint over. I think there was, yeah, it's just something like that. There's really nothing up here, just a couple things like that, and then I'll, I don't know, I'm going to just make all that orange, and then I'll take some black over what I don't want that's orange, okay, but there's our uh, window, I mean, he was doing this before, Thomas, you know, Thomas Kincaid used to paint orange in his windows, but Van Gogh did it first, just saying, you know, to make it look like light was in there, okay, now, I, we're, I want to stay in the yellows and greens, right, so, I want to come along here with our yellow and a little bit of white. That's titanium now, right? And I want to come this way, take white and yellow, okay? And I want to come this way and um, just all the brush strokes are going this way. Do you see that? And lots of little ones coming this way. And just it's not quite as bright as my underpainting, but it's still uh, bright. Okay, and then here's our colors here like that. We're going to just 
pull them right up into this paint right over the chalk like that now what happens is he's got some yellow oxide and the bottom underneath side of this is darker so you want to keep the brush strokes going this way there's a little bit of a shadow people don't see that but there is this is where this awning is kind of you know coming out over the it looks like there's a little green square on there yeah there's a green square on there too you're right there's you know a little what that green... is? I can't really I, tell I'd have my... no idea what it is. Maybe it's a patch in the awning, a skylight. <laughs> Who knows, right? And all they have was you some know, green fabric. Yeah. You know, I don't know. But um, that's there. And then we're going to come back down here and do something similar. This is the second coat on top of our, um, our, our windows here. A second coat on top of this. I'm going to come around here like this, these windows, and just go ahead and paint. Now, that you think it's already yellow. Why am I doing that? Because we want it wet because we've got to blend in some green here next to these and we want to come up here like that around all this. So I've got this all wet again. Okay. And this is where if you really cared you might want to tape this. Now, I'm going to take a little tiny bit of ultramarine blue and mix with that. And I have oh, maybe a tiny bit of thalo. I want a little bit brighter, more yellow. Yeah, that's good. A little, yeah, I definitely needed that. A little bit of green and then we're going to take a little tiny bit of black to that and gray that green okay and a little more yellow in it okay so now i want this i want this this is going to be green here notice that it's kind of streaky like this see that and then i'll take maybe a little more yellow kind of mix that in there this is all streaky right like this and it's uneven. This is kind of going up here like that. It's kind of uneven. And then we're going to come back down here and do the same thing, kind of an uneven bit of green, just between this section here, a little bit darker down toward the bottom here, a little bit of green kind of coming up this way. See, that's sort of pretty. And then over around this window here, this whole edge of the... Um, Underneath the awning is green, except for this lantern he's got going here. He's got a kind of a yellow lantern here, which we may or may not put in. I haven't decided where I'm where or I'm weighing in on that. But there's our window here at the end of this, and this is all green. And then John, right here is the same color. There's just at, at a funny little angle. There's this little. Dry this if you're not sure putting this in, so you don't get the angle wrong, because you've got to match this angle here of the awning this edge has to match that like that so it's that's a, it's a little tricky that angle of this square to make that right okay so there's that little square in there and it's got to kind of follow the curve and then we have um, a little bit of this green coming down this way but not much and then kind of overlap it with a little yellow all this is kind of wet on wet stuff okay all right, now, where else do we have some green? Well, we have more of a, um, a, 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 add a little red to this green, just a touch, because back over here in this window, it's green. Well, a little bit more, probably closer to this, this, this green than I thought. There's green over here. You see just the tiniest bit of this window showing. Here, right like that. You just barely see that. And he's got a tree over here which we'll put later. All right, so far so good? That's so people good. say, how, how long does it take to do this? Well, it takes a little while to do it. This, I'm sure he didn't sit down and do this two hours. How are we doing on time here? Uh, plenty of time. Plenty of time, okay. So the question is, we would love to see you sometime when we travel. John and I, sometimes we have to take business road trips and we go different places. And sometimes we're, we just take a little break to you know find new things to paint. And if you would like to be one of the ones that would like to see us on the road as we go, again, um, tell us where you live and um, your um, contact information. And, um, and when we're g getting ready to go somewhere in the car, um, you know, I think our next trip is going to be, if you're between, uh, you know, here in Florida, I think in November. Do you know the dates on that, John? Uh, November, where we're going to be going somewhere? Uh, where they, so we might be able to get together with somebody if they wanted to, you know, just for like a little cup of coffee, maybe at a little restaurant. Something like that, we could do it. Let's see when the November run is. 
So I know we've got something going on in November, so that we might consider doing that. Oh, that's our Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. It's our Thanksgiving. Yeah, we're going to Cuba for Thanksgiving, which we thought was really cool. Uh, we'll be heading out the weekend of the 18th. The weekend of the 18th, but how long is it going to take us to, you know, right? 18, and we get back on shore the 25th. So we'll be heading back to Texas the 26th, 27th. So 26th or 27th of November, be after Thanksgiving, we'll be driving back to Texas. And do you know the route we normally go? Uh, normally when we go to Florida, we take 10 over to 75 and then down. We're going down to Miami on that one. Okay, so um, are we going to stop in Biloxi? Uh, probably. We might stop in Biloxi. Um, all right, so here's our... Um, I've added a little purple to the same blue sky color mixture with the black. So we're going oh, into purple. Color. Is that a purple color? I'm going to come out a little bit further than I drew it in because I was kind of wrong. But that's all right. I could see that, right? Now I'm going to just come straight down here like this with this painting. Again, if you wanted to use tape, you could. He didn't. So, um, but if you needed a line straighter. But we're going to come all the way down here with the purple. Now, why does purple work so well? The band was a genius of color. Purple works well because somewhere I've got a color wheel. What is opposite purple on the color wheel? It's yellow. So purple and yellow are complements of each other. And so they just that what that means is they, that they're eye candy. That would be the best way to describe it. And even though there's a little bit of, of the gray in this purple, it's still purple. It still has these purple tones. Now remember, this line has to go at an angle like that. Make sure the foot of this is at an angle, please. This is where, you know, there's our purple. And I've got this probably a little bit narrower. I don't have as much room in my little canvas as he had, so I'm kind of making things a little bit more skinny. And he had it like that. but uh, And then this is going to go straight across. And we're just going to add a bit more of the uh, the dark color to this. Still purple, but it's dark in here. Like that. And we're going to say that little tiny bit of water on the brush. A little bit more of this color. And here's a sort of a darker uh, grayed purple here on this side. Okay. I mean, it's coming together, aren't you? Kind of amazed. I mean, it's really coming together well, isn't it? You're kind of amazed at how, you know how fast something like this can come together. And as long as I've got that, I'm going to go up here and take that using my little angle brush. I'm just going to put a straight line down here like this with the purple, and I'm going to just say that there's a little. Now this is where we're using a brush because this is what he did. He's just we're just suggesting a little window. Remember, it's got a. Um, I guess he has it going straight across, and then he's saying that, um, well, whatever he did. Let me just look at this closer. This is what glasses are for. Yeah, it just kind of went straight across here like that. And then he did a dark line down here like this. And um, then he came over here and suggested a little window right here at an angle, just up like that, and said there was a little window here. And uh, did these little angly cross pieces like that, doop, 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 okay, something like that, doesn't have to be too perfect. Then come over about a quarter of an inch, have enough water on your brush and make sure you've squeezed it so that it, you've got a good point. Now here's the deal, we're going to come straight down here like this and then go up at an angle and then straight down, then come below that, remember straight down, come below that like that, up at an angle, straight down, and then he just did this with his brush. I don't think we. There you go. There's this little other little window that's here. And I'm going to bring that down one more. Got that up a little high. That's okay. It's it's all at an angle, so I can change it. There you go. Straight down like that. There you go. Okay. So I've just kind of whip that in there. And then I've got a dark line here. That's coming this way. And um, let's see what else have we got. We got some stuff, but we're going to put that in. All right, we're going to come over here between these two windows now and um, um, shorten those up at an angle like that. Say so that that's these two windows like this, and these are going to be grayer. 
this is all kind of gray in here. This was all sort of a light gray, and I'm just using the angle on the brush to even lighten this up. See how acrylics dry darker? So I thought I had this pretty light, and I didn't. So anyway, we'd love to see you. If you want to see us, we don't charge to see people. <laughs> just if you want to it hang out. It seems odd to me. It's just a, something, you know, I mean, I know some people do. We're not charging to see you, you know. We're just going to just stop in and say hi and just uh, something you want to do. Let us give us plenty of warning so we can budget it into our trip, okay? It's always happy to, to do it, okay? And speaking of trips and knowing all the cruising you're doing, I had a question come in. Are you ever going to do a painting cruise? Well, we're talking about that. John and I have definitely talked about the possibility of doing a painting cruise. I'm going to make this slightly wider, you guys, and I'm going to use my thing here. Just bear with me. I think I need this slightly wider. Maybe I can come up from the bottom like this, but I'm going to widen this just a hair, and I'm going to use my um, uh, there we go. I'm going to use that. Now, if you're using a ruler or something like that, be sure to wipe it off again. You know, wipe off here ruler if you're doing that that's a pretty good straight line yeah we are going to do we're going what we thought we'd do is that rather than at this point uh you, when you're on a cruise here's the deal you can't predict what the weather's going to be like and so the idea of charging someone to come on a painting cruise and everybody's too seasick to do it silly so what we thought we'd do and again it's like a kind of a meet meet up thing if you want to meet your favorite art team uh, john and ginger on the um on the, on, high a cruise, seas. on the high seas, and you want to watch me paint something, and I'm going to, um, you know, we're going to try to be, be filming some lessons. We might even let you be part of our lessons if you want to. Be part, maybe you want to be well, on the YouTube. One time we did uh, Andrew over Like we did Haiti. Andrew. We'll put you, in, maybe you want to be on our YouTube show and be one of our guests or something. What we can do is, um, um, we'll, we, uh, we'll give you our, our schedule of when we might be going places. And if you think you'd like to join us on that cruise, you'd have to book it all yourself. All that's your responsibility. And then what I would suggest is that you, I'm making a little square here, okay, like that. See my little square? I don't know, he had a square, and then I put some light streaks in here like that, okay, too, too many. All right, like this, going to lighten this up, yeah, like that. There we go. Just some streaks. Okay, all right, there's our stuff, sorry. If so you again, did your water, you got a big blow on we're, your we're, Oh, look at that, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's a good thing that I love acrylics. They dry. Okay, so now, and then there was a little, taking a little bit of orange, and there was some orange. And I, I'm going to take, I'm going to do something. Well, sometimes if you're not sure about an angle, turn it upside down. I'm going to turn my picture upside down so that I can make sure I have this angle right like that. Look at the fine line you can do with that brush. Yeah, and I'll say, it sounds like we're advertising the brush guys. I just tell you this because I love the fact they carry these brushes. And they give you 5% off if you use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, in the discount code at the end. You can go to my daughter's site for any of the Art Sherpa brushes. Um, you can go to my site, which I just mostly I'm featuring the Ruby Satin Silvers, not because I don't like the others. It's just hard to update the page. But, um, but and you can go anywhere on their site. It doesn't matter. Whatever you put in your cart, just use my name, Ginger Cook, all one word, and you get 5% discount. And they... They ship all over the world, which I really, one of the reasons, I, not only do they have great prices, but they ship all over the world. And like one of our friends, Sylvia, got her brushes, a whole pile of brushes that she bought, $25 shipping, clear to Australia. So I thought that was pretty good. All right, so I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. And um, now I'm going to take a little bit of the darker color here. Now remember, when something, when you're painting out, when you're doing something on like paper, right? Like if John, I bet if you were to print this out on shiny paper, that the colors would be brighter than they are on this paper. Oh, I'm paper. sure they would be. You know, you know. So, so I'm going to brighten this up just to tear, tear, tear. Here. Like probably when he originally painted it. I mean, we're looking at it years old. You had fading going on and reactions yeah, stuff, with the stuff environment. Is, yeah, stuff's going on. Okay. And um, again, this is straight across here like this, and there was a little bit of yellow oxide here just on this part of the like a little edge. I'm just using the flat of my brush now and doing this. Okay, so now this area here we're going to repaint. We're going to repaint this area down in here a beige color. I'm going to take the white and a little bit of a yellow oxide, okay, and um, a little tiny bit of the black, more yellow oxide. You see how I'm kind of making this sort of gray beige color. 
and I think I need more white. Okay, this is all too yellow now here, and we're gonna just um, okay, I'm gonna redo this one right now. I'm gonna just take this in here like that. It's almost a, let's see, I want this yell more yellow here like this. There we go, more of a yellow beige. Let's take even some yellow with that. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to just kind of repaint over this now. Make this sort of beige color like this. And as we come closer in here, see, it, you know, it's, it's not quite as nuts as it is it's made out to look. And a little bit more yellow. Add a little bit more yellow to that. Just, where is my yellow? Here. I'm out of clean yellow, so let's start with some more. Okay. Because the most yellow part of this is on this side, right in here. This was the brightest part with the white, right in this middle section. And then the other section out over here was more beige, like this. Kind of a more beige color. Wasn't quite as crazy. All right. See how we're painting this in? So anyway, we'd love to see you. Um, my th I think it would be fun. Um, one of the things that's nice to do, and I, you, you just pretty, you know... Um, if, you, if we get a lot of requests for this, we may change it. We'll try it and see how it works. We're, we're open to new experiences, and um, uh, we'll see how it works. Okay, now, uh, there, we've got that. Now, while that's drying, and incidentally, the brush I'm using, this is one of Cinnamon's. It's one of the uh, silver Bristol on. It's a number eight. And it's the one I use to paint the um, background in. They hold a lot of paint. All right, so over here, up here, friends, we're going to do, um, I'm gonna, first I'm going to just sort of define my um, building here like that. And then there's a little bit of gray above this. I like that purple gray color, kind of really do, you know, like up here like this. This is a little bit lighter. We're just redefining some of this. Remember, this has to be at an angle, please. Okay, I'm saying this is the front kind of at this building right here, like that, see? Kind of at an angle, and then this is light here. And then we're going to put this green tree. So to make the green tree, we're going to start with ultramarine blue and some yellow and make something very dark, maybe a little bit of purple in it. Okay, very dark green, like Christmas tree green. Let's put a little phthalo in that too, very dark. Now, what he did was, we're going to come across here at an angle. Do you see what I'm doing with the angle brush? All right, coming in front of these windows like that. That's why I wasn't too, too worried about how the windows went, because you're not going to see most of them. And coming out this way into the dark. This is my dark tree going down this way. Remember, it kind of is uneven. Look at the bottom, how raggedy it gets, okay? It comes out into here like that. We're starting with the darkest green comes way up here like that, okay? Now what we're going to do is get some yellow, and I'm going to go right on top of this, like that, maybe a little phthalo blue too in yellow. Let's make a very bright green. There we go, very bright green, I like it. And while this is still wet, well, it's too bright a green. All right, take a little bit of cad red with it. Still want it pretty bright though. Okay, here we go, that's the color. There we go, and I'm tapping right on top of that dark using the angle brush to create this tree. You see what I'm doing? Paint on both sides of the brush, kind of flatten it out like this. Let's see, I'll pinch it, grab some paint on both sides, a little bit more paint. If you find yourself making a mark and nothing happens, see how it's coming back into and it's it, there like that. It's coming down here. This is our little green tree. Like that. You're going to see a little of that dark underneath it. Okay? Voila! Green tree. And let's take a little bit of that dark green. I don't know. It's just something in the window. Maybe a little bit brighter. Okay. So there's, there's that. And then I think he had a little bit of green. Just a couple little streaks of green on here as I see it. But that's okay. Okay? Now... So we've got green here, so we're going to make a little bit darker green around here on this side, just kind of darken this edge up. And uh, we've got some green coming up here. And then back up here in a little bit of yellow and uh, white, way back up here, got a little bit of yellow and white in this window. 
you can put it over light gray. So here's a little bit of yellow that he put up there in this window. A little bit of yellow here. Okay, and then he's got a little tiny bit of green. Kind of going this way on this awning like that. Not very much, but just kind of going that way. So a little sideways. Then I'm going to, it sounds like I'm jumping around, but I see more stuff. Then he's got some orange here. And then he's kind of outlined the top of this awning like this. And like that. He sort of outlined it. There you go. More orange. Like that. Like a nice light. Well, out of yellow. So those are, these are fun things. I think I like our live classes when we're doing that. You know, we talk about, you know, some, you know, these are, you know, sort of fun things that we do. Um, what are, what we love about Van Gogh is his colors. I don't suppose, here I'm going to do another little layer of stuff on this awning like that. And a little bit of bright yellow too over it. That's it. He had a lot of paint on this and I'm trying to do that too. And there's a little bit of this kind of orange coming down on the side here too. From underneath this. Just kind of a yellow orange color. It's mostly yellow but maybe almost yellow oxide coming down here on the sides. Like that. So just keep adding to the colors. But so far so good, right? Don't you think we're doing pretty good, John? I think you're doing fantastic. All right. So now the, the, here's the trick. I want you to think about in terms of the... Um, Here's some chalk. In terms of the, from this edge here, we've got a line going this way. Does that make sense? And we've got some stuff going this way. We've got some stuff going this way and this is, way. Has that dried down there? No, it's not dried. So okay. I'm just, it has not dried. So, but You're I don't think it really. scratching the actual paint. Yeah, I'm actually scratching the paint. So what I want to do is take a little bit of this purple gray color and using my little tiny brush like this, I am making these little tiny dots you know, little they're they're like um, little lines. You're putting the cobblestones in. I'm putting the cobblestones in. I'm just coming up here like this, and they're parallel to the top and bottom of the canvas, and they're sort of a kind of a gray purple color, and they're all different colors, right? So we're going to come this way, and then even back over here, we don't. And it actually goes up even higher than we have it here. And I just didn't couldn't show all that to you when we were painting it in. I knew we could get that now. What you want to do is keep a line about like this, um, right about like that. Keep these, keep these in kind of this line, like that, and all in that line. And then the same thing here. These are curved. These are a little bigger, and they're curved. These lines are bigger, and they kind of are coming this way to the corner, like that. Okay, and we've got, he kind of, well, it's like a little ditch here. He said there was some sort of little, little ditch here. Like that and like this. Maybe just like little gutters in this stuff, right? So then everything else is deliberate, kind of has a curve to it. And this is our first color. And we're going to go ahead and add colors to our cobblestones. But this is our first first layer okay of color just keep it th these are a little smaller on this side they're all coming around here like this there you go and these streets are still there that's what's so interesting these streets these cobblestones they're still there stuff is just it's fun to go to Europe and see the fact that you know you know here we have a tendency to just anything gets too old just gets torn down, blown up, and we do something else. Uh, we make a new stadium, whatever we do, we just kind of start over. And, you know, those guys just over there in Europe, they just kept stuff. Whatever they kept, they just kept. So, all right, so you see I'm going here, I'm kind of changing the colors a little bit. And there's a little bit of this down here. We're not going to do too much, but like that. All right, so now we're going to change colors. So to do that, let's just take a moment and dry everything. But you see how we've got almost, we're really close to being done. You see that? We haven't put the, put the tables and chairs in, throw in a couple people, a few little details. But we're pretty close. See? Kind of cool, right? All right. So I'm going to take a second and dry this. Do you have anything you want to say to everybody while I do this? And you mute this, John? I'll mute you. Okay. 
Well, appreciate you guys watching this while we're out and about. Um, this is something new we're trying. Let us know what you think about it. In the comments, let us know if you like this type of lesson when we're cruising. I think you're getting still the same benefit of a fine quality lesson. You don't get the interaction, but you can certainly use the comments because Ginger and I go through those comments and we can answer any of the questions that come up in there or whatever is on your mind. So you want to keep that in mind. If you ever have questions, you can use the Contact Us form on gingercooklive.gallery and we try to get back to you in a timely fashion on that. On the personal art coaching, if you signed up for that and use that, it typically takes Ginger less than 72 hours to get back to you. That's business days. Um, we try to do it as quickly as we can, but she wants to give everybody the best possible education. So sometimes it takes her a little longer. If you haven't heard us from us in a while, do drop us a line and let us know. I think Ginger's back, and she apparently has lost something because she's looking around. For my brush. <laughs> oh. Maybe this was it. Yeah, that's so good. Okay. Yeah, this is the other thing, too. I, Andrew wrote me the other day and said I had missed uh, one of his uh, submissions. I don't know where I missed it, but I caught up with that. So, if you again, if you think I've missed something, let me know. Um, sometimes if we're driving, obviously I can't do it. But even on weekends, weekends we really get slammed. So we'll get back to you in three business, you know, generally in three business days I try to get back to people. Um, if, whatever I can. If you haven't heard from us, let us know. And... Um, well, that's kind of, you know, kind of the outline thing for that. Now, um, uh, let me just straighten up a few things here. I'm going to take a little bit of white paint and yellow. Come up on the top of yellow? this. Did yellow? Did you say yellow? Yellow. I said yellow. Oh, and, sounded uh, like yellow. Well, it might have sounded like that to you, but I can't help it, you know. You're um, getting older. Things probably don't sound quite the same to you. <laughs> it's all right, dear. It's all right. We, we understand. I want a little bit of orange here. I want to put a few. I like these windows we had here. I think we had one here. I think there was some. That's either a person with a dress or a window. I think there was a little um, little square window up here, too. I'm just going to put one in here, not to get too crazy, right? A little square window right there. And now here's, I'm going to put a little white with this orange, right? Just a little tiny bit of white with this. And we're going to put some of that. Here's our cobblestones. And we're going to add some of that color. John, would you be, do me a favor and print this out for me on glossy paper? Or hand me my iPad where I can see the actual painting, where I can really see the colors now? Because well, which would so you rather have? Well, which would be the easiest to do for you? Well, the iPad, because it's already got it loaded on there. Well, all right, well, just hand, it to, hand me the iPad now. And I'm going to try and pop these colors a little bit now. See what I, this is all going this way, little dashes of color. I, I mean, I, it's just fun to me the way this works, and how we're doing it, and how we're putting. This is one of my favorite paintings of his. Do you want to stand real high for you? Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do you have a little iPad stand for me? Well, you know, I'm pretty close, you guys. I can see now more, a little more detail in it than I had before, which is good, right? Sometimes when you, what I like about an iPad is what I can do is I can blow up a section if I'm not sure what something is. Absolutely, I can blow it up, but it also gives me the best use of the color. Um, so I'm going to just, uh, he's got a little iPad stand for me right there. Okay. And, um, yeah, get that a little closer to me. Here's the stuff. Everything's about layers. We'll put a little bit of this, because we dried it, we'll put a little bit of this orange in here that might be in front of that window. You see that window might be doing a little orange. Okay. Now when this printed out, we missed a little of this window in here. Okay, so I've got to put it back. All right, when we printed it out, my printout missed that. But there is this tiny bit of window right here. And I'm going to just add it. It's, it's green. There's a little bit of a window right here, and I'm just going to put it in right here like that, just right on the edge. There, like that. There's that, that little bit of window right there. I knew I was missing something like that. Remember, this is down at an angle, okay? This is darker green right here and here like that. Now we're adding a little more contrast. This was dark green right here. So now the question, you know, remains, um, did we come up high enough up here with our tree. I think we did, and I need to get a few little bit more of the light yellow bits in our tree. 
Yeah, see, sometimes you can come back when something's dry. There you go. Because, again, you've got to remember, your paints are drying darker. Watercolors dry lighter, but acrylic paints dry darker. What did you notice when we painted with the gauche? Did they go lighter, darker? The gauche were very bright. The gouache, just, the they, gouache was gouache, very bright. Yeah. That was very, very bright, which was nice. Stayed. So now I want to just see my colors here. Okay, this is great. So let's come back here with a little bit of our, you know, orange in here like that in our patio. See, and just kind of get in the habit of drying in between that color and us. Um, um, and then even in our ditch, it's some of this uh, colors in here. The colors keep going. It's just got our little ditch in here. And... Um, and this is where a water sprayer mister might be at this point pretty nice on your canvas to, to on your um, palette. palette rather to not on the canvas on your palette. Thank you. To um, it looks like we're not going to use the magenta. <laughs> uh, well, here's why you might want the magenta, and here's why. And, and some will say, well, why would you want it now that you said you're not going to use it? Well, where were you thinking you might use it? Well, here's what you can do with magenta, and I'm going to show you. Magenta makes a beautiful orange. Ah. So if you want a really bright orange and you don't, you're not buying it, take a little yellow and magenta, and it's bright. See that how bright that orange is? It's a nice color. It's a nice color. So if you're saying, like for instance, if I wanted to brighten up something, and it make maybe make more yellow in here, just brighten something up. I don't know. You know, I mean, I'm just saying it's ten to one, half a dozen to the other. You know, it's just that kind of thing. But that's what magenta can do for you. Sometimes it's brighten up an orange. Um, color, not an orange thing. Uh, won't do a thing for the fruit. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of pull these colors this way. It's all about layers, you guys. That's what I would tell you, is that everything in acrylics and oil painting is about layers. Here's our little uh, window here, like that. Okay. Now, what other color can I add? See, you know, here's the deal. When you're going to hand me the iPad, you got to put it on you got to go to, do you guys know this? When you want to leave your iPad on, you've got to go to <laughs> display brightness, and then you've got to say auto lock, and I had it on two minutes, and I need it on never, okay? So then when I come back to my photograph, this thing isn't going to turn off on me like a bad light, okay? Like a bad light. Yeah, see? So now I've got it blown up where I can see these all these colors. All right, now I'm going to add, uh, let's see, more white. So as I'm painting this in, which is kind of fun, I'm, I'm thinking this is coming out nicely. Here's some more yellow, and I want more white. Um, you've got to keep the white coming in here. All right, so now, let's see, what color was I going for next? Kind of this light gray, purpley color. Kind of that still, I still need a little bit more of that in here. So we're going to... Um, just start overlapping some of this. So, so we've gone a little bit lighter with this, and then just added some more of this in here. Just you've got to keep keep it going like that, particularly in this front section, like so. And just you're going to bring a little bit across. But when we go across in this section here, it's lighter, and honestly, it has a little bit more of the blue tinge to it, like almost like the light blue. So it's almost lighter and more blue. There are some colors in this that are phenomenal. So we're coming up here with a little tiny bit of light blue. We've changed the, not to be too picky, but we've changed the colors in this section up here. And it's starting to look like our picture now. And this is a painting I don't think you're going to have any trouble doing. Once you've drawn it in, you just need a little bit of patience to... Um, to do all these little cobblestony things and throw in the table and chairs and a couple people, but really it's um, it's not bad. I, I think you're going to be okay. We've got some of this light blue up here in front of here, coming across here like that. Maybe some of this color in here. Mostly though, the light, the lightest blue, almost the really light stuff. It's almost almost it's almost white here. It's like that. Now we're almost going into some white up in here very tiny little bits of white. So it's kind of a very, very white gray color. It's up here in this part of the street. See how what a difference that's making when I add it? Like that. OK. 
Okay, I'm just saying there's a little bit of light in front of that. This line's coming this way. Okay, and I will just come back over here and see where I am. Now, on this side, we haven't put the real dark stuff in, but we can do that. So he's got, what he did was he got, he's got a little dark edge along here like this. Okay, and then he's got a little edge along here. Okay, and uh, let me just see where this starts. Yeah, it starts way up here. A little bit of a dark edge, and then he's got this little tiny to do to do, do, do right along here like this. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see? Can you see me? I don't move my wrist. I hold my arm in place, lock it on my side, and move my whole body. Do you guys ever notice that? All right, then you've got these little straight up and down lines up in here like this. Doop, doop. Then look at, you can do that just with the last three things of that, um, this brush. You can make that happen, which I think is really cool. I think you can, you can do so much with a brush like this. Now let's come along here like this. And um, in this area here, we got a guy. And what he looks like, you guys ready for our guy's pictures? I'm going to move this. I want to just put this like this. I'm going to show you with chalk, okay? So he's in this doorway like this, okay? And what you're going to see is you're going to see a head, all right? And you're going to see a leg like this, okay? You're, you're really, seriously, this is all you're seeing, and an arm like this. That's the guy in his, the head. So you don't even see that part. It just kind of comes like this, his shoulder down here like this, and you've got a leg that's this way, and this disappears. And then right here you've got a table, which you don't see anymore, but you're just seeing him, right? That's some, what some of the people look like, okay? And then over back over by our window, we've got a woman who's not very big, so I want you to see the triangle that we've got for her dress coming down like this, all right? Here's the top, and then you've got a kind of a hat. There's Our Lady, like that. That's all you're seeing of her, okay? And then, now you've got, you've got a, a, you're going to love this. Then you've got a guy that's a, a leg here and a leg here, okay? Now really, honestly, see the diamond shape here? And then his head's about the same height as hers. And this is all kind of coming in like this and you don't see it. It's all dark because these are very small. This part of her dress is white and her hat's white. Kind of she's got like a bonnet. And then she's got this um dress that actually sticks out like this with a black thing around it. That's the two of them and you see his dark leg and then his back leg behind you. Okay? That's all you're gonna see of this couple back here. Does she have a green dress on? She has a green dress on and okay. then she, you're gonna see like I guess she's got it they're gonna show you a hand. Okay? Kind of that's wondering. that guy. So we're not going to put all the people in, but that's a but that's a person, right? And then he's got a bunch of people in the cafe. But basically, what I want you to know is that an oval is a circle that would fit in a rectangle. Okay, so don't get it at an angle. All right, it's pretty flat, right? There's your oval, and then how he did the tables, right? You can figure out how big the tables were, and then he did the letter, you know, like the U, like this, and then he just did this. Like that and like that, like a drum, right? That's that's table one, okay? And then, but back over here, he had a table. Now, we don't know. We, we never saw the bottom part of the table. We just had a couple of figures sitting out. We'll put a few little tables. They get smaller as they go back. And then I want to show you how the chairs work. You've got, all right, a line like, let's see, kind of an angle like this and an angle like that. Here's Here's something square, right? Like that. Ready for that? And then a box. Okay. And then he did a he did a chair like this. But for me, the easiest chair to draw, and I'm going to show you, because he's got he's got all kinds of furniture. So let's just be real here. Let's just say that here's a here's the here's the top of the chair, and it's going to the back legs doing that, right? And then you've got a, here's the top of the chair. Okay. And you've got a seat that's coming out like that. See that? And across here like this. This is just a, 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 a rectangle at an angle, right? 
and then the front of the chair is doing this and then this is coming down to the ground like this you remember it's still going to fit in there like that and you would see this leg back under here maybe something like that so there's there's the top so if that's his chair then my simple chair okay that's his chair so i'm going to make it even simpler than that because that's oh that's way too complicated all right this is ginger's very simple chair right back back of chair okay then we're going to say here's the seat like that side of chair here's your seat okay and what you have to know about a chair that's most important is the chair's about the seat's about about uh, a, a third of the way down from the top of the table okay There you go. And they all sit on the floor. So, I mean, you can, you got a chair going this way. Then if you had a chair going this way, same idea, you know, try to make them a little straighter. This, th imagine this line's coming down here, all touching the floor. The legs are pretty long. Okay? Okay, chair. All right, so everybody's good with chairs and people? Good with so, chairs and people. Uh, chairs and people. So what I'm going to do first... So I'm going to shake up my Posca pen. Are we all dry? Um, yeah, we're dry. For, enough for this, right? And then I'm going to come over here. And I've, I love this guy in the window right here, this one here, because he's, he's about, um, he's real small. He's in, in comparison to the thing, he's about like this. So he's little. coming up here like this and he's going to be this is him right in here like that and I'll just put it in with a pen so I can fill him in later okay and then what else I want that's black if I'm going to fill something in what's black is some um, I've got some black outlines here like this And then I'm going to come up here like that, and I'm going to put in my little square here. And then just sort of outline this. Okay? So it's, it's certain, not everything. This window isn't outlined in black. That's not. But what we had up here, right, we had, um, we had a little balcony that was coming... Um, and I don't even know if we need to put it in. That there's some ropes and stuff. You've got something that um, there were two little black lines that happened here, and then you've got a rope that went really from here, kind of. Let me just put that back in here. It came up here like at an angle like this, and it started here. And if you want to put a few dots where it goes, so it's easy to connect. For me, it would be easier to turn it this way then, and say it's starting from here and going this way there's these lines maybe that's what's keeping the awning from falling down okay and then there's another one that starts here just below like right here and it connects right like that goes this way and kind of connects here like that so there's I, I don't know and then he's got another set all right right about right here he's got another set of it looks like shutters, supports. shutters that are doing this on this this thing here, and then they're doing this. And then you could later go over those if you wanted to with a with a brush. It might help you to draw them in. And um, and I think that's really all I want to put in there like and then there was something yeah I think there was some up and down these, these these lines were thicker I think I'd go over these with a brush but I've, I've I've got them at least drawn in with the pen all right so that was all that was in here and then up here there was a like a little cathedral thingy which is I think a little bit perhaps easier for you to draw up here and uh, with the pen with the Posca pen if you're having trouble with some of the, you know, kind of the outline on the buildings, putting a few little things, right? 
So if you're having any kind of trouble with the detail, that's what you want to do. So there's our little little pen up there for our little black cathedral thing. And then um, for our windows, he's got some dark lines um, coming here like this. And uh, they're pretty loose. And then we've got something like this coming across here like this. And then he did a, there's some, this window goes like this down here like that. And this is coming up like that. All right, so that's, that's that. Okay, that's not, nothing too complicated. I mean, really, the pens really are almost completely for um, our tables and chairs and stuff. But that was the, um, that was the main thing that I wanted to do with the pen. And then I come back with a tiny little brush, which I had around here somewhere. You guys all saw it, right? So, so any other questions while I'm looking, while we're filling in the little stuff here, John? John, you uh, still there? I'm looking, yeah. Okay. Um, what was the one about the wave and water? Because I know that came up last week. Something about, um, do you have to be a, you know, do I have to, you know, because, you know, you guys may not know this, but we have a wave and water master class in addition to our regular classes that we have on the website. Oh, yeah, it comes up, do I have to be a master acrylic artist before doing that? Yeah, that, that came up like that for sure, okay? Now, I want to come down the middle of this. This is a, just a little tiny angle brush here, and I want to... This is green. I want to come down the middle of this window like that and like this and kind of. And then I think I want to take, there was a cute little lantern here and he had it in orange. Yeah, so you don't have to be, that. you don't have to be, you know, the idea of painting anything over and over again is you get, you get good at it. So if there's a dozen different ways to paint water and I show you, you know, a bunch of different ways, then the, the 13th way will be yours because you're going to get your own handwriting on it. Okay, here's our little lantern. Like that, right up here like this. And then it's hooked, hooked up to the ceiling up here like that. Little lantern, which is kind of weird, but that's what he did. So who am I to judge? And then I've got some blue. There's some, I'm really seeing the colors here. There's some blue that's outlining this window right here like that. He did do outline in a lot of his paintings. Yeah, he really was a big outliner. He liked to outline stuff. And I like this blue here on the windows. That's just thalo blue and white. Remember, make sure that these are angled down. That was the one thing I saw people do, or not do, was angle it down. Let's put some of this blue in our cobblestones, as long as we're doing it. You know, and that's another little, good little brush to do that with, too. You can't... You know, this is the one thing we can do is just add a little bit more color to all this. Okay. So put some, you know, this blue and maybe a little bit more white with it. Well, just, to, you know, what is an easier brush for you to use, right? So just if you're if you're putting in colors in a picture, what's easier for you to do as we put this in here? So, anyway. Um, we, we encourage people, if you really want to, you know, paint the ocean or paint waterfalls or stuff, the Wave and Water Masterclass, what's good about it is that we have some very complicated paintings on there and some very basic ones. And we would encourage you to look at the, um, kind of the basic ones. Let's put a little of this blue in here, too. Now we're starting to add a little bit of color to this thing. Okay. Um, Maybe back out because you're flying all over the place. Backing out here like that. And I want to come up here like this and to find this awning right here like that a little more. This edge of this building right here. Kind of define it right there like that. So that awning's coming up. And as long as I'm doing that, I'm gonna do a little, I think I wanna just add a little more, you know me in purple, I just wanna kinda of go over this now. Let's make this darker. I wanna go over, remember we just did that, I'm gonna go over this with a brush now so it doesn't look too the drawing it in helped as far as just figuring out where everything goes. But I think it's nice to now go ahead and go over it with a brush. Not not so much that one, but the 
um, the, this window thing here. Okay, so, all right, now I guess we're going to have to put some tables and chairs in here. Uh, anyway, we encourage that because we've had, I've seen some great results with people who never thought they could paint water, and now they're getting really good at it. So I want to say my first uh, table is up here like this. It's above here like this, a little circle like that, and I've got a little one here. I've got a little one back here by this guy. Remember that one? And we're going to just put it. They get smaller as they go back, and then I've got another one here. And we've got a couple out here. So for me, the easiest way to put them in is to just paint them. For me, the easiest thing is to take white paint and just paint the white table, top of the white table in. So that's our biggest one right there, and then one off to the side like that. There's our big white table. And then it's got a couple little ones. And do you have to put in everything that he did to, to make this work? No. So you've got little ones back here that they're real small. And then back by our guy standing by the door, um, here's the table. And then here up here, this one was smaller. Okay. Here's the top. This is one of our bigger ones right here. And again, we've got a nice big one here. Um, a little bit more white right here on this building. There you go, like that. Okay, so now what? Um, this has to, there, for this to work, if you're going to outline it, because now this is where the pen's going to co be coming really handy for the chairs and the tables, we've got a little guy up here that's waiting on us, okay? And I'm going to just blow him up so I can put him in, because he's kind of cute. I'm going to put the white part of him in. He's got an apron that's coming down here like this. It's coming up like that. It's almost a straight line, but not quite. We're going to say that this is kind of curving around like that, and that's all we're going to talk about. So there's our little waiter. And let's see, is there a white table back there? I don't know if I'm going to put in every table we ever had. Um, there's this little table here. Okay, second coat of white. And then I got to, um, and then I got to dry it, okay? Got to dry it, John. Let's take it. Got to dry it. Got to dry it, okay? Good. Okay, while she dries that, it's, it's uh, coming along quite well. It's been in a little bit over an hour and a half. Hope you guys are enjoying this lesson. Again, make comments in the uh, comment field underneath the video there. If you got questions, go ahead and put them in there. Others can benefit from your questions as well. All right, so we're shaking this up again, and I'm going to go ahead and finish my waiter right here. Here's his head, little oval with his hat. Now again, this is a Posca pin. It's an acrylic pin. It's acrylic, and he's just kind of holding a tray here, and then he's got a foot under here like this, and uh, I guess the back part of his that's the back part of his leg in the back here. So there's this little guy. He could be, you know, he's got a little thing that comes down here. This has got to be dry or none of this works. Right, so there's our waiter, okay? Now, let's just come around here and use our pen. To, from, uh, if this was an oval, from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock, you're outlining it. Not the whole top of the table. Do not do the whole thing. It's just the front part. That's this, ooh, that's a secret, isn't it? Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing on this one. Like this, we're going to do the same thing on this one, except that I lied, and he did the, he did the whole thing on this one. And he, the reason he did it was, otherwise you're not going to see it. He did the whole thing, and then he did another one back here. So and those then, that are on the cobblestone, you're a little bit more... Yeah, they're going to be a little harder to see if you didn't do it that way, all right? So then, um, I want to make sure I've got this thick enough. Now let's just take a look. This one is sitting, the, the bottom part of this is right about here. So I'm going to put a dot, and I'm going to say that there's the um, loop to the table from each side like that, kind of like, uh, like a U, okay? And then this one sort of curves a little bit. And then I'm going to put a dot right here where I want the, the table to sit, right there. There's it that way, and then this is sort of reaching out like that. And make a little foot. So this is, a, you, they're, they're very impressive, very impressionistic, okay? 
And if you want to go over this so, so, so it looks less pen-like with a black brush, you can. I think that's going to help you. Now the table, the chair itself, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just go ahead and draw my chair in here like this because I know this is the height that I want it at. And go ahead and put my legs coming all the way down to the floor to curve this back. And I'm saying that this one's coming up like this. And I'm going to just curve the back like that and say that this is the top of the chair like that. And we can paint that in. And instead of that, I'm going to put another one, even though he didn't. We're just, I'm going to put one like this. We're going to do the same thing over here with another chair like that. And say that this chair is, is here. And um, I'm going to say here's the top. Make sure the backs are about the same height. You know, like that. Can say that there's the back, same height. And I'll fill in the seat. Okay, all right, so that's, we're not going to do a lot of detail. See that? So then when I, when I paint in the seat or add a little bit more color to this, right? Now the same thing here. I can just, at this point, I can just put a couple of chairs back on either side of, you know, this table and just suggest that there's a table here, okay? And, um, and I can just suggest that there's some people sitting here, just... Um, I don't have to do much. I'm just going to draw a little circle and just kind of scribble in some people and I'll paint a little face on them, a little light face, and give this lady a hat, something like that. Um, put another little chair here. Again, you, you want it careful to just not get too much going here. Um, if, you get, if you get it too busy, you've got, you spent a lot of time on this, so that, that would be my recommendation. And the same thing here. Let's see. She's got, he's got just one chair here, kind of um, facing this table like this, where the where the legs are underneath, and you're not really seeing too much of the chair. And there's this chair right there, and uh, maybe we'll say there's a little one right here. This is very simple stuff, you guys. Don't don't get it too complicated. Because otherwise, you're not going to like it. Now, we've had uh, people say uh, or ask the question, isn't it cheating when you're using a pen? Well, no, because, I mean, we're, we're using art supplies. You know, it's all art supplies. You know, and again, it's I probably will go over brush. some of this with a, um, with a, um, I think I want to put another little chair here, here, and just suggest a chair. you you don't have to sh show everything to you guys. You can just add some, right? Maybe I want a little chair here like this. This is back up here and behind this table. I'm not going to put all the people, but I can suggest a few little chairs to indicate somebody's, you know, wandering around. Now, I don't know if I'm going to put these people over here in the corner, but if I was going to put them in, I'd almost have to put them in using my white Posca pen, which I have one. Did you guys know I have a white one, too? <laughs> I have wow. a white Posca pen, and I might put that in, too, because that can be very handy, okay? So, because this lady is up here with her, little, with her little hat, right? She's right about here with her little hat, and then she's got a little outfit on here. And then it's coming way back here at a kind of a corner here, and I'm just going to paint it white, and I'll, I'll do it later. I'll do it something else, right? But this is this lady here with the hat, right? And the same thing here with my waiter. Here, let's just use the pen and make these table's a bit wider. I like that, too. That's now nice. That looks like a larger point than your yeah, black Yeah, this point. is a fat point pen. I wish I had a black fat point. I don't. This is a fine, you know, I don't have that run. But one of the things that I do know is that there was some white in here like that. So as long as I'm doing it, I'm going to do a few little white lines like this in here, like that. Like that as we finish this up. All right, so I'm saying that that's here, and then my um, my lady is um, the back of her is back like this, and here's her dress. It's coming up like this, and we're seeing a little bit of a foot, and um, and then my guy is here, 
here's his head, and he's kind of coming this way. There we kind of drew him in, and he's got a leg that's doing this, and then something back here like that. And so then, in order for you to see him, now this was interesting how Vincent did it, in order for you to see him, now this was the tr tricky thing, he had a few light highlights, because the rule is wherever there's a light, there's a dark, okay? So he had this couple here, so we're going to take a pointed brush and a little white paint, and then the top of his hat is here, and he just did a little bit, a few little light highlights, almost a light green, I think, or blue, on his shirt to kind of indicate that there was his arm. And um, let's see, let's put her green outfit on, um, her green dress, right here like that. Let's just paint that in. There's her little green dress. And... Um, um, and then she's got this dark area right here. Here's a little dark in front. Here's his dark leg right like that. So your brush will kind of fill this in a little bit and make it where it's a little easier to see. But it doesn't have to be much. There's just some people back here, right? He's got a, another lady. Now this is interesting here. He's got somebody back here and all you're seeing is the cloak. You know, just like that. Almost like a little triangle thing here. And then a little bit of a light gray uh, hat. You know, I mean, that's all you're seeing. And then you're seeing, this is sort of fun, isn't this? This is the good part, right? And then all you're seeing is like you've got, she's got a little cloak around here like this. So back here, not quite that bright. She's got this red, uh, like there's a, there's a person back there. And that's really, that's really all there is to it, okay? So, again, and then he took some yellow and orange, and he said that the table, the front of the tables, where we did it black, you're going to take a little orange now, on a couple of these out in the street, and he gave the chair, he made the chairs, the top of the chairs orange, okay, which is interesting, which we can do. We're going to say that... Uh, uh, he made these orange, and I don't want them orange. I want them green. So guess what? I'm changing it. Sorry. <laughs> and, well, and, and, why, just, and why, why are you going with that? So they don't because you can't. Why are you going to say? I mean, how can you see that? They've got to be green. I'm sorry. Anybody, if anybody can see they need to be green. But you've got the cheat sheet there. You can make them any color you want, but I want mine green. Kind of phthalo blue and yellow. Nice bright green color. So there here's a go. perfect example of when uh, Mr. Van Gogh should have contacted Ginger for some personal art coaching. Just saying that wherever there's, a, you know, I want these to show up. I want, I want these green, these little chairs green, maybe a little bit lighter here on the edge. You know, just something like that. There you go. And then I'll take some, I'll take some, um, maybe some dark red here and, um, you know, add that. Let's see, maybe, let's take a little bit of dark. Oh, no, we're going to have to use, bl you know, black, but we're going to make the, the table legs a little more substantial. So you put your brush in here, twist it, all right? So kind of a big lesson, I know that, you know, and every one of his chairs was different, too. I mean, I, and I suppose that's reasonable, isn't it, to expect, okay? So now that I've kind of pinned them in, I know that I want them a little thicker so that you can see the Okay, okay, the little leg coming down there like that, and the same thing here. A little bit of water on the brush, and um, let's let's get this get this table leg going like that. Same thing here. A little bit of dark under here. A little bit of kind of widen the chair leg. Now I can have these tiny ones in the background. See, so now suddenly, you know, which I think is kind of cool. Now let's fix the person back here, the one that's back here. Remember I told you we had some sort of a kind of a light orange face on here. Here's some person sitting back here. And all she did, honestly, you'd, you'd think that, that painting these people in was really, you know, it was a big deal, but all she did was just kind of sit them under back here and give them a little bit of a head and a hat, you know what I mean, really. And, um, and a face, I mean a little orange face. And here you go, a little orange face. Here you go, a new face. Okay, I mean, doesn't you don't have to have that much detail to make any of this work. They were just, if you really look at that, you'll see there's triangles and a face. 
that just barely suggested that there were people, though you do get the sense of people there, okay? I mean, you do. I'm just saying you don't, okay? And then he took the, you know, a little bit of purple and black, right, like this. And now we're going to come up using a brush like this, and we're going to do some bigger marks in the cobblestone. I'm going to move my water where I can get to it. Now, this is our finishing touches, you guys. So, again, we were talking about the, um, um, you know, Wave and Water Masterclass. And um, if you take both, if you're on both, and um, we give you a discount um, so that you can learn to paint. You know, if you're taking both the lessons in both um, uh, areas, so we'll give you a, um, a discount on that. That's what we call our video lesson library. Very video is... lesson library. If you're, if you're doing it, like, remember this was kind of, remember what he did here. Let's just make this a little small. And this was wiggly. It wasn't one complete line, right? And then he had, that's got to be the drainage ditch or something, right? And then he's got these little, they look like the top of the letter M. You know, they're not quite straight. The ones in front, they're sort of curved, just kind of a little bit of a hill to them. And this is the dark part right in here. And this is where it all starts. Isn't this starting to come together now? Don't you think? It looks like it to me. You know, started to come together. I this. think anybody that would see this, even, you know, you out there in the studio audience, anybody would see this, they would know that it's Vincent Van Gogh Cafe. Yeah, and the same thing with these little lines up here. I'm not sure why. We're not trying to make you into counterfeiters. No, we're just saying that... Um, um, no, we're not. We're absolutely not. We're not saying that you are counterfeiters. Now, there's one more person here I feel like I've got to put in. He's right here. Which guy? He's yellow. Oh, the one that's right crossing the street? Yeah, he's yellow. Yeah. So basically, what he is, is um, he's got uh, some uh, like an, an, um, an upside-down V for legs. Almost looks like a jockey outfit. And then like a little, I need more yellow. He's got a little bit of a yellow. He's got a little head here. There he is. And then there's something, I don't know, there was something back here too, but maybe we'll just put a few little lights in the window. I think that rather than that, we'll just do, do something like this back here. Don't you think? Just add a little bit of something back here and then maybe there's something going on here we're not talking about, right? Okay, so that's him. Now he has to dry before I can put the. He's outlined in black. Maybe I can get away with that right now. But he has like this little black waist, and he's he's outlined. He outlined him. It's a little trickier with the little brush, but there you go. There's our guy. He's doing something right there. There's a guy right there. We're just not talking about him. Okay, and I want to make her head a little smaller. Let's just get this little hat smaller. Okay. All right, that's good. And then she was a little bit white right here, right there. This is, this is her cape. Okay. And then what he did here, now this is interesting to me. He said she's got a little arm coming down this way. Like that. I guess maybe they're dancing. It's kind of cute. And then this is like here, and then there's a little foot. Okay, so there might be, I don't know what they're doing. But the, the big dark ones here, the little dark, uh, these lines, they didn't go over here. This is important. They're kind of they're slightly less uh, dark this way, and there's a few over here, but they're smaller. So if you're going to do this, make sure that you've got these lines smaller and less dark than these front ones. Okay, like that. And um, part of me feels like I still have to put a table right here. I'm going to put one here too. I'm going to throw a little table in there. Just because he, you know what I mean, there, just a little table, we'll just, we'll change it. We'll make one of these kind of tables, you know the kind I'm talking about, like that? Where they just have the center. All right, so we're suggesting a table there. Um, same thing here, suggesting a table here, I want this a little bit bigger. Um, there was a little line right going right, like kind of wiggly line like that. Kind of, I think he had to break up this right here. So there was a little wiggly line that went there. And again, we're moving little tiny bits. Let's try some green now. 
some little tiny bits of color going this way. And I don't think she's fat enough. I needed to make her slightly fatter. There we go, better, okay? So that's our lady back there. And let's see, what did we just drop that brush? Oh, I got it. Okay, so let's zoom back out. And uh, if you've been close up, let's just zoom back out and take a look. And I'm gonna zoom back out and just take a look. Is there anything else that I need to do to kind of finish this off? And I think we're pretty, I feel like we're pretty close to finished. I might take the back of my brush now with a little yellow and white, right? And touch the sky with a few little tiny bits of bright uh, stars like that. I kind of like that. Don't you kind of like that? And then I, I'm, I'm looking for a contrast. You know, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. Remember that? Remember my rule? Um, well, it's not my rule. It's an art rule. Okay. And I can see where this is could be a little more purple and a little bit of yellow with the purple and kind of gray it out. Right like that. And let's get a little bit of purple a little bit more white with that. A little tiny bit of black, but not much. Just to, I want that black to be, this to be a little darker right in here like this. This We need a little more contrast right here, so I can certainly put that in. This is the kind of thing where you can go back in and say, okay, so what do I need to do? Either light, lighten or darken something, and I'm going to do that. Um, so that's better. Do I have enough? Um, of this sort of darker purple color. This part here, this little section right here, I'm going to take my brush with that purple color and I'm going to wash over it right like this and darken this area right in here like this. This area right in here was a little darker. So um, this is almost, this is called glazing and then I'll wipe some off. You, you make sure it's nice and dry here so you're not smearing paint but I'm trying to get this to be a little bit darker right in this area right here. This little ditch area had a little more orange in it. So it was less yellow in other words. You know, it was kind of less yellow. And um, I'd say we're kind of done, John. Kind of? This is, I think, oh, well, I don't know if it's kind of done. I feel pretty done, you know what I mean? I think I'm, I think I'm feeling very done. Um, is that how he had his lamp? I can't really see the lamp on the little thumbnail. He's got, got the, he's got a lamp. His lamp is, is tied to the wall. I'm having it hang down from the ceiling because I don't oh, like okay. this line going across here. See, the problem with being an artist is if something doesn't matter, if it's in the picture, you feel like you're in the story and, and you must put it in. You see what I mean? Now, there's some little tiny lines like this on this one, right, like that, I guess you could add. They're hooking this up, but this is a kind of an, our little orange... This is pretty good here, and we've got, you know, our orange here. We've got our. Um, I need to bring this. Um, this this window needs to come up taller right here. Guess what? I can see that. I didn't get it tall enough. And that's the window versus a door. Seems like it's a door. If maybe it's a door. Whatever it is, it needs to be higher. You know, it needed to be. Uh, you know, it's really coming down from this angle, here on the picture. It's coming down right like from there. Yeah, right it's taller than the other one. So it's and it's taller than the other one. So I got when I drew it in, but this is not, what I love about acrylics is you really can't make a mistake because you can just fix it. You see what I mean? And come up here and I'm gonna say that this this one and, and make sure you've got that nice angle straight. You, this is a really sharp angle that's coming down like that. Okay, and there's this and there's that door. So that sort of, you know, brings that out. And then I want to make sure I have enough. You're going back across here, and you want to make sure I have enough of this color in my sidewalk in here like that. And, um, oh, yeah, I was going to take some. He did this. He had some red going here like that on this. And then this over here, which I didn't, we, it didn't quite print that well. There was some green right here again on the, on the window right here. There was some green right here. Oh, yeah, I see that in the thumbnail. 
So you can see that on the front. It didn't show. And then this area here, this little, um, the angle on this is wrong. So this has to come this way. Go back and check all your angles. You know, that's what I tell you to do. Check all your angles since there that door's coming around like that, right? And um, let's see, what have I got? I'm just, I'm kind of looking to see this is straight across. Make sure I have that straight across like that. And um, this was dark in here and I have it too light. So it's really dark in here and it came up like this. Okay. Um, there you go. How cool is that? I think this is kind of cool. I mean, I'm just, I think that is very, very fun. I think we've got a good picture going here. And, um, whoops. There we go. Hang on. Let me find my painting again. There you go. Stop. Oh, man. Stop it. I hate iPads when they do that. I've got to look at my picture again. All right, stop. Now I'm going to just kind of see my picture. Now I'm looking at this again, thinking I got my sky. I've got all this. You guys, this is what you want to do. Um, this was darker, so I'm going to go ahead and make this line a little bolder, like that. Make this a little skinnier, like that. And there we go. Uh, Starry Night Cafe. I think, that, I think you're going to get this easily. Oh, yeah, this was, I'm, I see one more thing here. This was a nice bright orange line coming down here like this for our window like that okay and uh, and our window was nice and bright yellow right here like that too and then there were some dark lines going this way there there was a window in this door absolutely a window in this door and then this is the bottom of this it's dark right there there okay there we go you guys so Starry Night Cafe, no, it's not Starry Night, it's just actually his cafe, but it's uh, Vincent Van Gogh's cafe, and then this was darker right there on the front of that line right there. Going to make sure we've got that. And you see, painting it yellow really helped, didn't it? You really get the nice bright, um, you get all the nice bright areas of the picture that you need, okay? So that's, I think that's kind of cool. And don't forget to add the purple to your black. And do we have any other questions, John, before we say good night? I'm going to just make these a little darker. Let me just paint these out and put them in again because I don't oh, like I them. think that's all I've got right now. Is that all you've got? Okay, so I'm going to paint it. So I want you to see that I didn't like those windows. So I wanted them more purple, right? These shutters, more purple, right? Okay, and I want you to see how that works. So I didn't like those. And so now I just painted them out. And I'm going to put them in again. And this is something. So don't fret if you don't get the, dry it and just paint it out like this. Okay, there's this one. And again, if you need the pen to do it back. There you go. There's the other shutter. See, that, the little other open shutters. And then there was uh, this line here. And then there was... Well, we didn't put those lines in. So there was a couple straight lines here, and we'll just put them because he, he had them. All right, something like that. So just kind of to keep, you know, keep it real. Keeping it real. And we got it. So can you sign your name to a Vincent Van Gogh painting? Sure. Copyright's gone on that. If you did it, go ahead and sign your name. Can you sell it? Sure. Somebody likes that and wants to buy it, this is, again, I hope you do sell it. I hope you've learned to paint this and and sell it and um, is there anything else I might want to do to the stars I know we kind of made this a long lesson I know what do we got to do about two hours on this now don't we yes boss well you know what it it, it takes a while to do these things yeah oh yeah I mean you're not going to just admit you know, it but there you go you guys it takes a while to do it but uh, there you have it and I love the fact that we brought the green up we've got this bright green here I love that the green is um, See, I mean, this to me is, is cool, where the green is really bright here like that. We've got some bright green in the chairs. See, don't you think the chairs needed to be a bright green? I think so. I think that, definitely think the chairs needed to be bright green. And this needed to come like this on the awning, like that. This is the end of this building, like that. Here's this green here. 
So he had, you know, he had a few little bits of green here and then. I like my green chairs. And I like the, some of this green on this window, too. I'm going to go back and just, you know, there you go. Ooh, pretty kind of green in the window. And there we go. And we've got our funny little yellow guy. We've got the green on the dress. Okay. All right. So let's let's just call it. Let us let's just call it uh, call done. It done. Calling it done, man. I'm calling it Have done. Have you signed it? I haven't signed it because you know what? I saw one more thing. <laughs> I saw that. I saw it. Now I'm just seeing it. See if you see it too. To the right of this, you did a little bit of white something here. That like maybe that well, there's the, a light. There's a dark. Well, I think it, maybe it was a little ditch, or maybe there was some water running or something. And there is some little light in here like that. He had some little lights coming across using my small, little tiny white lines, very small in here. I mean, really look at his picture, and you can see there's a lot of detail in this. Okay? And, of course, it was darker back over here by the front of this door. Like that. All right, I've signed it now. I'm signing it now. I think Does I'll just... that mean you're done with it then? I'm done, John. I hope you wow. guys had fun. Please subscribe to our channel. We never remember to tell you that at the beginning, but I'm sure that you <laughs> meant to do it, right? And, ca and catch our ending. I want to thank Judith Guitar for singing, singing us out of the video. And remember, if you like Vincent Van Gogh, we've got a lot of his on our... Um, Really, we have a ton of his on our uh, website and also on YouTube. We're, we probably have more Vincent Van Gogh tutorials than anyone. Okay, there's our guy. All right, have fun. Good night. Good night, Good night John. Good night, Ginger. Good night, Sammy, wherever you happen to be. I'm a student, I say with glee, of Ginger Cook. Books Academy. Take your time and do not rush. Use ruby satin silver brush. Don't use black and mix the green. Learn what blend and grayscale mean. Yes, I hope each day to earn coaching phases as I learn. I'll be an artist, wait and see, ginger means the world to me.